Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. We received a call on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline asking about how big a plant will get. Learn how to know the answer and others in our first segment. Do your tomatoes get a black rotted mark on the end of the bottom or the fruit? Would you like to know if it's an insect or a disease? We'll share with you the surprising answer and cure in our first segment. Are your annuals looking a little sad? Are you longing for that full look they had in spring that would turn heads? You can get back to that lush flower garden with a little work. Hear all about it in our third segment. Professor Steve called the Bloomers in the Garden hotline and shared some terrific advice on getting amaryllis to rebloom. Hear all about it during our fourth segment. What's bugging you? They're back. Spotted lanternfly. Oh, I hate them. They're in their final two stages where it's their orangey stage and their adult stage. And ah, I, I know because I've been inundated with them. It's time to kill them before they lay eggs in the fall. Hear about how in our final segment. So stay tuned and we'll be right back in the garden right after these messages. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Do you think you have insects eating away your nice, beautiful lawn? Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below is the product for you. Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below not only controls chinch bugs, which is a surface-feeding insect, but also controls grubs, which is a subsurface-feeding insect. It does it all, guaranteed. When most homeowners see their lawn turning brown in the summer, they think grubs. Damage from the larva of Japanese beetle. But in many cases, it could be chinch bugs. Chinch bugs are hard to see because they are so small and you'd need to get down on your hands and knees to see them. If you misdiagnose your problem, Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below has you covered. The product will control both chinch bugs and grubs. This summer, control your pest problems with Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below. It also may be used in flower beds, on landscape ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below will also control crane fly larvae, ants, mole crickets, sod webworms, bill bugs, and many more. Your property will be pest free with Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below. So next time you're visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below and expect to have the best looking lawn and landscape in the neighborhood. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or see and hear us by subscribing to Bloomers' YouTube channel. Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley every Saturday. First, wake up with us at 6 a.m. on WNWR The Word at 95.3 FM and 15.40 a.m. Tune in at 8 a.m. to Bloomers in the Garden Radio on Talk 860 WWDB. A rebroadcast of Bloomers in the Garden Radio is played each Saturday evening at 5 p.m. on The Word, 95.3 FM and 1540 a.m. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard throughout the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. We received a call on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline where a tree became a domestic point of contention between mother and son. Here, listen to the call. Hi, I would like to know to what height your little tree grows. I have a big tree next to my house and uh, my son wants to cut it down and I love it. So please call me back and let me know. Because I'm upset about cutting the tree. Thank you. I think she has a juniper virginiana, also uh-huh. known as eastern red cedar. Right. Um, right. That Teresa, right, Julio? Teresa, we tried yes. to get a hold of you, Teresa. I need to, you know, call yeah. us a call back. Julio is trying to to give you some information. Uh, so hopefully you're listening today. Mm-hmm. So forth. 
tell your son to leave the tree alone. <laughs> if you <laughs> like right. it, keep like it. it. Just maybe prune it up instead of cutting it down and then all of a sudden having this big gap or having this missing <laughs> missing plant. Oh, yeah. Or even worse, now you have a stump yeah, and you want to yeah. plant something nice around it, but the stump's there. Yeah, so the uh, if if yes. you can, you can you can keep it. You can also limb it up a little bit. And just instead of keep thinking it as like a, a juniper tree, think of it as the type of tree it is. It's an evergreen that casts some shade on the house and helps your cooling bills. How about that? Yeah, it's even better. Uh, again, if it's, a, again, an eastern red cedar, uh, it's funny growing up and that uh, at my parents' house that they had eastern red cedar on their property. They are a, um, they grow wild all over New Jersey. Certainly the, this area of the Delaware Valley and the tri-state area of New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, they just grow wild. Uh, and I think they're a beautiful tree. They're going to get to be about this, this tr- juniper, probably 12 to 24 foot tall, about uh, even taller uh, it can get wide, probably about 10 to 20 feet wide. But a lot of times they stay a little more narrow than that, and they're a little more open. It's not necessarily they're tight like it's been sheared. Right. Uh, so, again, this plant, if you love it, keep it. Keep it. Yeah. Um, have you ever heard of cedar apple rust? No, I haven't. It's a weird thing that happens when you have an apple tree near one of these eastern red cedars. Okay. And and you, you'll think this is cool, Aaron. They get this like almost star gelatin feeling growth on the plant that it actually occurs. And, and it just, again, it just, it's, it's bizarre. And it's called cedar apple rust. And it's a common problem with many junipers. And it's not like you can't really say it's a disease or an insect or anything like that. It's just one of those weird things in nature. And I know that ours used to get them at our house. Yeah, I was like, what the heck is that? Orange? It's orange. What is that? And it was cedar apple rust. Did you prune it off of there? Or nah. Just let it go? No, nah, we just let it go. Okay. Now, for those of you listening, here's a little, I guess this is a, a, a little... Uh, it would not phonics lesson. This would be a, a lesson in Latin. Latin yeah. Botanical names of plants. They often give away how big they'll grow, what color they are in their botanical name. Now, like for instance, we're gonna we're gonna use Picea pungens glauca nana globosa. Mm-hmm. Picea, the first name. Okay, <laughs> Picea is spruce. Picea pungens, the pungens part is Colorado spruce. Picea pungens glauca, glauca is the key here. Glauca is, means blue, Colorado blue spruce. Picea pungens glauca nana is a dwarf Colorado blue spruce. Anybody following me? Mm-hmm. Picea pungens glauca nana globosa is a dwarf globe Colorado blue spruce. That's a mouthful. It is, but globosa means it's going to be globe-shaped. Nana means dwarf. Mm-hmm. I guess for our Italian customers, it means grandmother. Right? <laughs> anyway, but nana means a, a dwarf, slower growing, um, and glauca means blue. Now, here's some other tricks of the trade. When you see in the botanical name aurea, it's usually gold. Or golden, or has golden attributes. Rubra, red. Rubra is always red, and Virtus is green. So it's one of those things where it'll give you some clues in the botanical name of how it's going to grow. So again, we go back to like the first name is like our last name, and, and the second part of the name is, you know, maybe our surname like holy in hispanic families Mm -hmm. that sometimes they use the mother's maiden name and the father's maiden name that's correct right both yeah yeah um and that where it's kind of this way where picea pungens 
is like the the mother and the parentage right. of the plant that makes it. That's why it's a Colorado spruce. And again, Glauca is a description. It's blue. Nana is a description. It's dwarf. Globosa is a description that it's globe, that it's round. That's good to know when you walk into the garden center. Yeah. And the, nobody's around. <laughs> you go, what's that <laughs> Nana? What's a Nana? Right? It's <laughs> right. like, what does it mean, Nana? Yeah. Or when it doesn't have it. Yeah, yeah. Like, for instance, the Juniper Virginiana, if, mm-hmm. if that was purchased, mm-hmm. it's just a Juniper Virginiana. It's getting big. Getting big yeah. <laughs> you know, it's going to be, it's the full original parentage um, of the plant and, and the, the original just species only, and it's going to get big. Mm-hmm. So one thing about your there is a reason for botanical names. Some people say, why is it a waste of time? You know, it's, why do you put that on there? I'm confused by that. But um, for those of us in the know, it, it, it does help identify the plant. And it's a descriptor uh, of what it is and how big it's going to get and what color it's going to be. Great lesson. Great lesson in binomial nomenclature. Nomenclature. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> wow. What's his name? Uh, from the 18th century. His name is uh, Carl uh, Linnaeus, I believe, that created the system. Okay. And then, like, it goes all the way down to, like, even the italics mean something. Wow. Yeah. Ridiculous. Have you been studying? I have. Studying? <laughs> I have. <laughs> Can you tell much? <laughs> wow. Horticultural yeah. snob we've been talking yep. about. Absolutely. Hey, hear that? Absolutely. Hey, hear that? Yeah, it's just like, wow. Yeah, absolutely. Impress your friends. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> All right. We'll be back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Wanting to up your game in the vegetable garden? With 90 years of organic gardening experience, the Espoma Company has you covered. Espoma Organic Garden Tone is not your average garden variety fertilizer. Garden Tone is especially blended for organic vegetable gardens. Its all-natural formula contains Biotone, a blend of organic ingredients that supplies essential nutrients for strong, healthy plants and mouth-watering vegetables. Its slow-release formula provides continuous feeding. The Biotone contained in Garden Tone is a combination of organic ingredients and beneficial microbes to help roots grow deeper and faster for bigger, more bountiful harvests. Garden Tone is simple to use and safe for people, pets, and the planet. No harmful chemicals or synthetic fertilizers are ever added. You can find Garden Tone at fine garden centers. Visit Espoma.com to find a retailer near you. Garden Tone from Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. Last year, millions of Americans asked the internet about protecting their lawns and gardens. There's one simple answer, BioAdvanced, because gardeners have trusted the Blue Bottle for decades. Invasive insects, Blue Bottle. Lawn fungus, Blue Bottle. Japanese beetles, Blue Bottle. A BioAdvanced answer for every question and guaranteed solutions for every problem. BioAdvanced, get more from the Blue Bottle. BioAdvanced all-in-one rose and flower care controls insects and diseases, plus feeds. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Doug from Bristol sent us an email. Here's what he says. Why are my tomatoes rotting like this? See the attached photo, which you can't see because it's the radio and podcasting. Thank you, Doug from Bristol. And what he sent us were tomatoes that the base or bottom of the fruit was black or rotted. And he had pictures, and that we're going to show you those pictures up on uh, on our uh, page. You'll see them um, certainly on the YouTube page. And again, you please subscribe, subscribe to us on YouTube, and give us a five star review. We appreciate it, and uh, we uh, actually would like to show it to our sponsors because they certainly help us a lot. Speaking of which, Espoma, Espoma, there's yeah. a one. They are the best company. They are. 
That the Local? the president of Espoma stopped by with his son oh, he just to say hello. Wow. About a week ago. And it was like <laughs> you came, you, you sent me a text. It's like, hey, was there, you weren't here, so just yeah. stop by. You know, my yeah. son's working in the warehouse. And it's like, you know, the the Spoma's a big deal. Yeah, it is. And that they uh sure. just are still that that same company, family company, but mm-hmm. still it's just they're amazing. Because they're new, they have a new factory that they built in um, where it's a bag filling thing in Pennsylvania, where it has the strictest, uh, I guess, use of um, environmental precautions as well as it's all run by green energy. And they are certainly the ones who coined the phrase, say, for people, pets, and the planet. I've seen that guy who sprays the the odor eliminator in his mouth. He says, he says that he's stealing their line. Oh, really? yeah. Wow. Anyway. All right. Whatever. Well, we're back to uh, blossom end rot. Um, yeah, sure. That mark on the bottom it is blossom end rot. Julio, is it an insect or a disease? Neither. Then what is it? It's a calcium deficiency. Calcium deficiency. Isn't that interesting? Mm. So the plant's not getting enough calcium. This can happen to not only tomatoes, but peppers, and it can happen to eggplant, and that it's basically you need to get calcium into the plant and put it in the soil. There's a couple of ways that we recommend doing that. Jonathan Green, Magic Cow, okay? Magnesium, iron, and calcium. Calcium, remember, it's a calcium deficiency. you got to get calcium in the soil, and it's a great thing to add to your garden every year, okay? Also... Julio, over there behind you, there, or in front of you, there is, what is it called? Rot Stop. Rot Stop. And it's basically calcium. And it's a spray that you can spray on your plant and that it's going to absorb that calcium. If some of the fruit is, uh, is already all marked, for instance, if you, it's not going to cure the damage that's on the fruit, but you can cut that out and eat it. It's, there's nothing wrong with the fruit. Trust me. Trust me. Growing up down on the farm, that's the stuff that we eat. That's probably why I hate tomatoes. But uh, that was the stuff that, that we ate. It was anything we brought in from the field that had blossom end rot. We just cut around it and ate the rest of the fruit. So there's not something that's dangerous or anything that's going to be, you know, icky. So go ahead and, and don't worry about it. You can cut that out. But again, it's simple to cure. It's blossom end rot, no insect, no disease, no spraying except for a calcium and adding calcium to your soil. Um, I'd add it now and I'd, I'd turn it in. I'd put it in again in the spring. And then that way you'll eliminate that problem altogether. Any, anything else, Julio? No. No other advice? Yeah. Also, try to, try to make sure that you're not letting your your vegetable garden go extremely dry, then it, then extremely wet and right. extremely dry. If you can try to do some supplemental watering so it keeps it, you know, a little bit less, you know, where it's, you know, dusty dry. Dusty. You, you want to you wanna help it out during certain times. But honestly, for the most part, we are through the extreme heat. We'll have some days in August where you need to supplement, but we're getting those like every other day rain. Mm-hmm. So this is Good. this is how it works. Mm-hmm. Um, just again, it, if it goes from wet to dry, wet to dry, wet to dry, sometimes that will also make it happen. But um, it ideally is a calcium deficiency. We'll be right back with segment number three right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. 
We are proud to announce that Bloomers in the Garden has partnered with Renewal by Anderson of Greater Philadelphia, Delaware, South Jersey, and Southern Maryland. Renewal by Anderson is the top window and door company in the United States, specializing in replacement windows and doors. You might be thinking right now, what the heck do windows have to do with gardening? Well, Renewal by Anderson makes this beautiful garden bay window that's energy efficient and made from recycled materials. It's perfect for growing the finest indoor plants possible. When you are looking out your windows filled with plants in your beautiful garden, you don't want to see old windows that are cloudy, warped, or even rotting. That's why people in the horticulture community love Renewal by Anderson. Not only do we want our gardens to be beautiful, but their homes as well. Renewal by Anderson participates in horticultural events such as flower shows, earth days, and eco fairs. To get more information and set up a free home consultation, please visit www.philadelphiawindow. Dot com And be sure to tell them Bloomers in the Garden sent you. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or see and hear us by subscribing to Bloomers YouTube channel. Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley every Saturday. First, wake up with us at 6 a.m. on WNWR The Word at 95.3 FM and 1540 a.m. Tune in at 8 a.m. to Bloomers in the Garden Radio on Talk 860 WWDB. A rebroadcast of Bloomers in the Garden Radio is played each Saturday evening at 5 p.m. on The Word, 95.3 FM and 15.40 a.m. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard throughout the New York tri-state area on Classic Oldies, 12.50 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Radio. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. We're going to have an intervention right now. If you've got your headphones on, great. Put your ear a little closer to the radio. You know who you are. You know who you are. You went on vacation, didn't you? You forgot to arrange someone to water your plants. You had beautiful bedding plants full of flowers. And then when you got back, they went from that wowsy to lousy. And it's okay. We're here to support you. You know that most of them came back, but you've got sections that are just not going to make it. It's time to just cut and get rid of those flowers that are dying that are that are making everything else look bad and and it's easy it's easy. you know why your local garden center has fresh material large plants that can replace 2 foot by 2 foot holes that you have in your choked out garden because you wanted to take a beach day it's okay We've all been there. Julio, you've been there, right? I've been there, yeah. I've been there. Yeah. But bit. don't spend the rest of the summer saying, oh, I can always put mums in in the fall. Oh, they're pretty. I hate mums. I'm sorry. I'm a fan, I'm a fan of pansies because of a name like pansies, tough. they've got to be tough, oh, right? Yeah, sure. Anyway, but, then, <laughs> but pansies, you, what, October? Yeah. You're going to wait till October? The, yeah. the frost that we get, that's a killing frost. Now, we're talking about a killing frost, a frost that's going to kill your annuals. Softest annual in the world. There's going to be impatience. That's usually, gosh, November? Yeah, at least. Maybe, maybe the end of October, Halloween. Mm -hmm. But listen, don't spend the entire summer looking at those dead areas where, you know, they just didn't, Get as much water from, you know, say you had the kid next door watering, right? You know, by the time he got to the end, it was like, I'm sick of this. And, and that, that section doesn't look good. It's time to cut out those plants and replace them. If you're looking at, on our YouTube channel, and please subscribe and give us five-star review, we would appreciate it. And most of all, our sponsors would appreciate it. But we're showing a nine-inch lantana. Now, if you bought hanging baskets and, and you know the size of it, these are the size of a 10-inch hanging basket. So they're big. They're big. They're not just 9-inch plants. They're at least a foot across. 
And there are even bigger plants behind us in the background. We have uh, some Denver daisies. Now, if you, you get the chance to maybe mix it up a little bit, if you have some vacant spots in your, in your, in your bedding plants or even in your container plants, there's a lot of things you can do. And you can also prepare for fall by adding something like the Denver daisies. They look great for summer, but they also in the fall are going to look terrific. Different types of ornamental grasses. There's so much that you can do. Your combo pots, is it time to maybe rip them out and start all over? Sure. It's time. Sure. Hanging baskets, oh. fresh summer, heat tolerant plants. Mm -hmm. We talked about replanting your vegetable garden last That's week. What, yeah, we did. And that really, th there is yeah, I was to do a that. huge palette for being able to plant mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. In the fall, that palette becomes mums, pansies, and ornamental kale and cabbage. Uh. Boring. <laughs> <laughs> These plants will live through the majority of the fall into certainly October through October and that, that first frost that comes sometime in the beginning of, of November. And we're talking about a killing frost. We're talking about pinks and purples and summer fashion colors that you can't get in the fall. You know, maybe Celosia has got a purple and... You know, there's some moms that say they're pink, but they're doggy. Yeah. Don't give up. Don't give up on your summer flowering plants. Vinca, Calibrecoa, Lantana, and more mm -hmm. is available at your local garden center. Go out, replace those areas where you've got some holes, and you'll be happy because you'll have to see it. Because right now, you kind of kick yourself when you see those areas that are kind of died out. Just go out there, replant them. Because the plants that are available now, the fresh material that's available now, are heat-tolerant summer plants made just for that and for that summer color palette, not fall plants like mums. <laughs> <laughs> Go out there. We understand. You'll feel great about yourself and your yard and garden and home will look fantastic. That's great. We'll be right back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Do you remember seeing that light green grass growing high in your yard late last June? Well, that was nutsedge grass. It always had a lighter green color and it always grew faster than the rest of the lawn. And you'd find it in other places like along the sidewalk. It is the worst weed in the world. It's hard to get rid of. And what you need to use is Fertilome's Weed Out Nutsedge Control. It will control both yellow and purple nutsedge plus over 50 broadleaf weeds such as dandelions, clover, chickweed, and ground ivy. Fertilome's Weed Out Nut Sedge Control gets absorbed by the roots and the leaves, and within days, the sedges are gone. You may even reseed after four weeks of spraying the nut sedge. So when you start seeing those light green glass braids growing in your yard, make sure you purchase Fertilome's Weed Out Nut Sedge Control to kill any nut sedge threatening to invade your nice green lawn. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or see and hear us by subscribing to Bloomer's YouTube channel. Bloomer's in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley every Saturday. First, wake up with us at 6 a.m. on WNWR The Word at 95.3 FM and 15.40 a.m. Tune in at 8 a.m. to Bloomer's in the Garden Radio on Talk 860 
WWDB. A rebroadcast of Bloomers in the Garden Radio is played each Saturday evening at 5 p.m. on The Word, 95.3 FM and 1540 AM. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard throughout the New York tri-state area on Classic Oldies, 1250 AM WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Professor Steve called the Bloomers in the Garden hotline and shared some terrific advice on getting amaryllis to rebloom in time for Christmas. Here's his call. Hey, guys. It's the professor, and we're entering August. Very hot. But it's also time to get ready for Christmas. Yep, you heard me. Julio, it's time to brown off your amaryllis. By browning them now, they'll be ready in, in full bloom for display with beautiful flowers. Simply stop watering, deadhead the leaves, keep in a dark, cool place for 10 weeks. That will bring you to mid-October. Then simply bring out the light and the water for another 10 weeks. And that will leave you a wonderful Christmas. And you'll have gifts for you and your family. And I hope this helps everybody. Okay. See you in the garden. Bye-bye. <laughs> Professor. You know, uh-huh. I took this week off. <laughs> you did. <laughs> but I wanted to come in for a radio family. Uh-huh. I think I'm going to give the mic up to Steve next oh, time. Gosh. Uh, Steve, you nailed it. I did. Absolutely. We talk about amaryllis probably at the wrong time. We talk about amaryllis around Christmas yeah. and warn people that this is what they've got to do. But really, you reminded us that it's now oh, is when you need to do it. Mm-hmm. And you're basically forcing that plant into dormancy. by don't worry, you're not killing it. You're putting it into dormancy by not watering it and basically putting it in the dark. Yeah, and it's something the plant it requires and that, you know, we get a lot of things where there are other plants that, that require this. Um, one of the, the, the things about amaryllis, though, they have those big strap leaves that once it's dried out, you cut those off. And look, it's right when you bring it out and you pull it out and you're ready to start watering it again. Um, but, I mean, it's 10 weeks. He's right, 10 weeks. And... We talk about uh, how poinsettias need to have 12 hours of light, 12 hours of darkness in order to bloom. Uh, some of the other plants that like going dormant to force into bloom, that, that uh, calanchos are, are another one, that, that you kind of just cut them off with water. It's almost like you mistreat them. <laughs> but don't worry. It's, it's not. They're plants. Not puppies. Right. So, and it's what's required. And it's all throughout history that these things, because it's science, right? It's science. And that where researched. Professor Steve nailed it. And, and it's, this is the time. This is the time. So if you have an amaryllis that is just sitting there and has those strap leaves and it just annoys you every time <laughs> because it doesn't seem like it's blooming, this is what you need to do. You, you need to do exactly like Professor Steve said. You've got to force it into dormancy and you start that now. And I guess the, the real bright spot is you don't have to take care of it for 10 weeks. Yeah. That's right. You know, don't worry about watering it. Put it away <laughs> no. in the closet. Yeah, as opposed to our segment previous, you can let this one and ignore yeah, it and, and let it let and it lo- appear to be dying. Yeah, but right. that giant bulb that's oh. under the soil and under the ground, that's yeah. still alive, and that that still has roots right. attached, and there's yeah. stuff going on in there, mm-hmm. and so it'll call it to bloom yeah. in time for Christmas, and that's the the trick it, is like. Like, for instance, there's um, Thanksgiving cactus and there's Christmas cactus. A lot of times that the timings for those get messed up. But Amarillo, Steve, you you absolutely nailed it. A great call all around. Um, I I can't say much more than that. No, I don't think so. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Other than we'll be back in the garden right after this. is here. 
and people have a lot of questions about weed and feed. There's one simple answer. Bio Advanced 5-in-1 Weed and Feed. Just one application kills lawn weeds and prevents new weeds and crabgrass up to six months. And if crabgrass is already growing, it kills that too. Plus, 5-in-1 feeds and greens your lawn. Bio Advanced 5-in-1 Weed and Feed. Get more from the blue bag. Here's the dirt on potting mixes. They're not all created equal. A Spoma organic potting mix gives roots the ideal balance of air and moisture. It contains a special blend of beneficial mycorrhiza to help grow stronger roots, bigger plants, and more bountiful blooms. Try a Spoma organic potting mix indoors and out for all your potted flowers, vegetables, and you'll see why it's the best. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you. Organic potting mix from Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. Your next houseplant is waiting for you in Bloomer's Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomer's recognizes that houseplant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A houseplant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large, revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len. I'm There's Julio, Julio, Julio. Yeah. <laughs> and Aaron, Aaron and we got side. Sam behind the glass. Uh-huh. I tell you what, I could have been behind the glass this week. Yeah. I was out working, uh, someday I'll finish my deck. I was out working on my deck and like I'm getting hit like it's raining spotted lantern raining. fly. Spotted lantern fly, and they're, they're just sneaky. They crawl up and all of a sudden uh-huh. you see them and right now... They call them instar stages that the spotted lantern goes through a series of instar stages. And the last two are where it um, is a little creepy crawly thing where it's an orange, it's orangey red. And it's the fourth instar stage. And that it's usually July to September. And it's reddish with white spots and black markings. It's about a half an inch. And it has a long snout, and it like crawls really slow. It and it reminds me a little bit of like a stink bug, like where a stink bug so, is pretty yeah. stealthy. And that's what these were, but they jump on you without even thinking twice. Mm-hmm. I killed one with two by four. Yeah, I hate them. I hate them, them. <laughs> because not only that, uh-huh. then there's the, the you know there's the next stage where it's the adult spotted lanternfly. So that's we're getting we're getting both. And that it's the one that has the, uh, I call it that the lingerie, lingerie look, look where it has that, you know, uh-huh. leopard coated white uh, spotted sure. wings. And then it opens up and it has like this peekaboo red part up by its uh, abdomen. And it's like, that's where it's actually, a, it's a pretty insect, but it's just pretty annoying because they're getting ready to mate. <laughs> and that's the whole thing. It's like, you know, we're going to subdue the earth. And that feels like they have. They've they subdued have. near my house. I think I told you my mom, my grandmother used to have a uh, an over jacket or overcoat that she used to wear just around outside when she had to go and get the paper. And it looked just like a spotted lantern. <laughs> 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 it's crazy. Like- <laughs> or they sell them, they sell clothes like that. Like I think it's called a moo or something like that. Some crazy, I don't know, man. <laughs> that wasn't quite what I was thinking, <laughs> but yeah. He said the lingerie looks. <laughs> well, <so. laughs> hey, you know, it's like silk, man. Like <laughs> it's and again, it's it looks like a, a white leopard skin, a le- like because it has it's white. The wings are white, 
and it's the majority of the body. It's it's and that they get to be you know two inches long, but you know it's amazing that they go from the and again it's called instar stages, and that it goes from that red color that they are now and it's reddish orange, and then all of a sudden they're as the big adults. Get ready. Get ready because you need to get rid of them. And one of the ways, but well, let me back up. You know why I have them? You got a neighbor? I yep. got a neighbor. Mm-hmm. He, he has tree of heaven yeah. growing yeah. in yeah. his, uh, I guess it's his hedge line. And it's really on his side. And I can't like go over it and Cut knock it. him out. I really want to rip out all the hedges because it's mostly black, wild blackberries and it's wild wisteria and it's the used to be for Scythia that was growing. And Hmm. that's all right. We've got time for the story. They were planted like, you know, how you plant a hedge where they go odd and even. So you go, you plant one spaced and you put one in between it so that it fills in quicker. And that was done with the first When they were filled in, he decided it was a good idea to take the full grown forsythia that was grown on the closest ones to his property line and took them and dug them out with a backhoe and put them on the other side of his yard. And what that did is it let all this light in and all of a sudden all the weeds took over. They just took over. And... Uh, they were getting suppressed because of the shade that was being produced by the forsythia, but now there was all this light, and they <laughs> that's saying they grew like weeds, mm-hmm. they grew like so weeds, weeds. Yeah. and one of the weeds that has grown is the tree of heaven, and that that is a host specific plant to the spotted lanternfly, and it's a good chance that if you have spotted lanternfly, you have a tree of heaven now. Um, a lot of times they look like sumac. Um, if anybody's used to sumac, uh, fast growing, uh, and and again, it's it's that they get where they're coated on it, and they're just attracted to it. We can trace the origins of spotted lanternfly to actually a pallet of stone that was delivered from China, and that it was brought to a stone yard. In Pennsylvania, and that's where they started. Jeez, and, and right, thanks, China, uh, China, China. Um, and that. So what happened? It you know, it's funny. It's Japanese beetle, right? Mm-hmm. Or, they don't have Japanese beetle in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom. It's true. I don't know. Anyway, back to spotted lanternfly, and so it's only a recent phenomenon, and that it hasn't been as invasive as it, as it had been. Um, I think that natural predators, birds aren't looking at it anymore saying, what the heck is that thing? I'm not eating that. (laughs) To where now that I've I've seen, you know, maybe you've all seen the the pictures or or little reels on Facebook where it shows a praying mantis eating a spotted lanternfly. I like that. That's cool. That's cool. I could watch that all day. Kill it. (laughs) Especially (laughs) when I had them crawling on me yesterday. I was like, God. You know, anyway, and that they do not fly. A lot of people think they fly. Yeah. You know, when you chase them and they're leaf hoppers and that, you know, it's like, you know, Sam, I forgot to, to have you find the Buzz Lightyear thing that we used in years past. Anyway, where it's not, where Andy, uh, what, well, who is it? It's, uh, what is the cowboy's name? In- oh, Woody. 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 Yeah. So Woody is telling Buzz Lightyear is like, you can't fly. You can't fly. Oh, we you know, had that at one point. Yeah, yep. yeah, you can't fly. Like, Spotted Lantern can't fly. They can hop with style. You know, hop that's style. like what Spotted Lantern do. <laughs> and they can, because it took me two or three whacks to kill can, that, to kill that one with the two by four. <laughs> <laughs> but in any case, yeah. we need to control this. We Because if it gets out of... Uh, control it could be like locust, and the one way to do that is it's it's time to start banding your trees. Do you, do you understand that? 
Oh, oh yeah. Aaron shaved did, his head. Did your us. did your neighbor do any of that? Anything with that that no. tree of heaven? He didn't do anything. No. And this is what going on? How many years since the? I don't because it grows so fast. It's okay. probably two years. Two years. Got you. Yeah. Yeah. So that thing is probably like. Yeah, oh, it, it's growing. Like that, yeah. I mean, I'm gonna take my uh, reciprocating saw and <laughs> introduce it. <laughs> and say, boy, yeah. How did how did how did, that must have blown over in the wind? All right, but it's an awfully clean cut. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if it gets to that point. My neighbor's actually a, a decent guy. Gotcha. I don't know if he'd cut it down, but. <laughs> All right. Anyway, but uh, you need to band your trees. And the way that spotted lanternfly work is that when they become adults, they begin to breed. Their breeding time usually is in September um, it begins in September, so we're getting close, folks, and that they climb up the tree and that they lay their eggs, which look like – it looks like mud. It looks like if, if somebody wiped mud on your tree, that's what it would look like on the trunk of your tree. And that they'll do it on anything. We, we were – in our old studios in the building, yeah. they were laying their oh. eggs on the actual side of the building. And this was a marble building. And that – so they'll do it on anything. anything. But primarily their their focus is looking for a tree to be able to lay their egg mass. And if you can put the banding up, they need to climb up the tree that you'll catch the spotted lantern fly. Now – I've heard people have problems with banding where that they've had actual birds oh, get stuck to it. Yeah, that's all right. So here's what you do is you, is you put the banding on and you take some, uh, some chicken wire and you make it so that the, the spotted lanternfly can crawl between the holes of the chicken wire but you kind of create a, I don't know, like a covering that's separated from the tree. So the spotted lanternfly crawls under it and gets stuck to it. And where the birds, they can't because they're on the chicken wire. So if you have it separated from that, uh, that again, that the, um, the sticky turtleneck if you will because yeah, <laughs> that's what it becomes and that you put a like say a gap um so that it's a spacer you know the birds can't get can't to get it inside. but the spotted lantern fly will crawl through it and still get stuck um we need we need to keep this and, and i think that a lot of of our gardeners and, and listeners out there are being proactive because the amount of Spotted lanternfly that we're getting now is less than we were getting, say, in 2020 or 2020, you know, 2020, 2022, like that. It, it's, but it's still there. They're still there. I feel like, you know, populations are all over my house. I've gotten one. I saw one, and it actually, I, the only reason why we saw it was because it got stuck in a spider web on the side of my porch. And when Did I, you watch I the spider up, eat it? Well, I That'd mean, I didn't cool. see the spider. It was just there. And yeah. we, it's still hanging there. I just saw it the other day. It's still hanging there. But it stopped moving? It's dead. It's, it's dead. dead, dead? Yeah, dead, dead. Okay. It hasn't moved. And, I mean, I, I try, you know, when the wind blows, usually, you know, they'll try to, you know, scurry around in it just to try right. to see. It, it kind of jumps it, around yeah. and it gets, it gets stuck. stuck more. Yep. It, it, it's gone. No? It's meat and it's maker. Yeah. Maybe... That's Back kind of cruel. Somewhere. I don't know. It is cruel. I mean, <laughs> I mean, that's I, all right. It's a spot of lantern light. Kill it. <laughs> it's not, I could have stomped it, but it yeah. looked like it was it was already gone. Well, if you've got one, there's probably a few hundred yeah, more because one spotted lantern fly. I think they lay two hundred eggs. And I was looking around my property. I don't see any black mud like. Yeah, no, well, they're gone. Or, they hatch in spring. Okay. Yeah, so you didn't you, you won't see that for another in two months. I know a lot of uh, farmers, are, are they don't like the cold season unless they have cold crops, right? But when the first frost comes, that's usually the first indicator. Spotted lantern flies are gone for the season. Yeah, so that they can get yeah. killed by the cold, but once they lay their eggs, that's guess what? Right. It's a wrap. 
They're there. They're they're not eggs. They're they're spotted lantern seeds. <laughs> so basically, is. Um, so you can also spray, and again, banding will protect your trees, but when they're in this phase, and you can spray them, and what we recommend spraying them with are the thrins. Julio, am, am I am I going to stump you if I ask you what a thrin is? A thrin is an insecticide, which is which has a, a property that uh, it's uh, it, it lasts longer than than uh, your usual. It's a natural pyrethrin. No, it's it's based off of a natural I, pyrethrin. I, I, mm-hmm. And the whole thing about pyrethrins, even though they're organic and they do have a great list of of insects they control. It has no residual. So it breaks down in sunlight. And it's made from, actually, uh, chrysanthemum flowers. And that it sprays it. You you can kill it, but it's gone because if sunlight is getting to it. So it's not the best. So so what we did, and it's the science, folks. Here we go. Based on the chemistry of the pyrethrin, Pyrethroids were copying copying the pyrethrin, but made it so that it had a long residual. Uh, Penn State has been on the forefront of all of the spotted lanternfly information, and their recommendation is bifenthrin. Get it? Thrin? Bifenthrin, which is high-yield bug blaster 2. Bifenthrin, 2.4%. That's high yield bug blaster two. And that contains bifenthrin. And that's a spray. And that you will use it to spray your spotted lantern fly and a host of other insects. And it has a long residual. It's rated as the best by, again, that's by Penn State. There's also beta sifluferin. And that, that is also a great residual. There's a uh, permethrin, another, see all these thrins? That's bonide has a product called eight, and that's what the active ingredient is there. Um, you know, we've, we've really switched over from giving like, you know, cutesy names, like it's bug killer times two, you know, to where we're using active ingredients. And, and folks, if you can follow along or, you know, just, just record or bring the podcast to your local garden center. And look, this is what they're saying to get. Because sometimes it's hard to say. It's hard for us to say by fentherin. Probably took me two years to figure out what they're saying. It's <laughs> yeah. bifenthrin. No, it's by fentherin. And again, that we we dumbed it down by saying thrin. So so if you're looking on the active ingredients and you see thrin, any of the ones that are not organic are going to be great. They're going to do a good job. The natural options, you do have organic options, but again, the problem is, is that there's no residual. So, going with pyrethrin, okay, this is the original, the one made out of poinsettia flower, or poinsettia flowers. Boy, you got me thinking of poinsettias for some reason. Already. It's all because of Prof- Professor, Professor Steve. Steve. Yeah. You got me thinking Christmas, Christmas already. <laughs> that uh. it is made from chrysanthemum flowers. Uh, but again, sunlight, no residual. Spinosid. Spinosid. Remember, we talked about that last week, but spinosad is the one that where it was found in a rum distillery and that it was in the 80s. So it's a fairly new technology. It is organic. Uh, and then again, it, the probably most popular one is Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew. But be careful because Bonide has, am I allowed to say this? Sam, yeah. I said yeah. bastardize. Yeah, you can they, say that. That's fine. Yeah. They bastardize the name of Captain Jack's. It's like, we're going to put it on weed control. We're going to put Captain Jack's weed control. Captain Jack's. A- Everywhere. I hate I hate. They, they, yeah. Yeah. Triple action hool. Triple action. Another organic. Oh, great stuff. It has neem and pyrethrin. Right. Both. So again, neem is going to gonna coat the, the insect and the pyrethrin is going to work. Again, it's not that long of a residual. Banding is something that you should do just simply because it will help control the population 
that way. If they're just annoying you and you want to spray them, you can do that as well. I suggest doing both, not one or the other. If you have significant spotted lanternfly and you're seeing them now, they're only going to get worse because they have not reached that adult stage. One of the most annoying parts is, is that they crap on everything oh, yeah. and they have what we call honeydew and it like you want your your patio furniture turning black oh, yeah. that spotted lantern fly it'll do it, do it yeah. it'll do it control that spotted lantern fly don't just brush it off this is something that uh in the agricultural world that it is a concern and that uh, you need to take care of it so go after those spotted lantern fly we'll be right back right after this Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or see and hear us by subscribing to Bloomers YouTube channel. Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley every Saturday. First, wake up with us at 6 a.m. on WNWR The Word at 95.3 FM and 1540 a.m. Tune in at 8 a.m. to Bloomers in the Garden Radio on Talk 860 WWDB. A rebroadcast of Bloomers in the Garden Radio is played each Saturday evening at 5 p.m. on The Word, 95.3 FM and 15.40 a.m. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard throughout the New York tri-state area on Classic Oldies, 12.50 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Me and Julio. Hey, thank you for listening, everybody out there. And remember, you don't have to catch us on radio only. You can find us on your podcast anytime. So subscribe to us. Go to your favorite podcast provider. Subscribe to us. Hey, give us a review. We really appreciate that. That encourages us like no other. Uh, We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. Also, YouTube, same thing. You get to see us and you get to see some of the things that we're talking about in studio because we often carry the products and the plants. We're going to be here same time next week. We'll see you in the garden. See you in the garden.